Hi everybody, it's Gringo Scott here today. Coming to America, part two, coming to, get it? It's kind of funny. The 2021 Prime Original Movie. Starring Eddie Murphy, Jermaine Fowler. This movie is directed by Craig Brewer. As I'm sure all of you know, this is a sequel to the first coming of America way back in the day, back in the late 80s, the first one came out. I was a young man then. This movie starts off in Zumanda, some 30 years later from that point. Prince Akeem, which is Eddie Murphy's character, has now become King Akeem because his father is dead and or becoming dead or dying. But there's a classic monarch problem. There are no male descendants, so he needs to find a male descendant for his heir. He finds out that he impregnated a woman back when he was in New York City without knowing it. When he was drugged and the woman took advantage of him. Anyhow, thank goodness that happened, I guess. So he ends up being able to go to America and contact the son. The son's a young adult, probably in his late twenties. This movie is basically about him getting the son from America and simulate him into the world of Zumanda. And that's basically what this movie is about. Let's jump into the negatives right away, shall we? I'm not a fan of this woman, Leslie Jones. She is so lewd, raunchy, and her humor ugh, is over the top and is just an exaggeration of like a stereotype or something. I don't know what she's doing, but I don't know, guys. I am not a fan. So I was not thrilled when I first saw that she was in this film. I was like, ugh. But they do tone her down, so that's a good thing. I like that a lot. That's great. Tone her down. I like that. If you're expecting Arsenio Hall and Eddie Murphy in this movie a lot, like it's like reunion time, it's more like they come in and they're supporting actors. They're not a big part of this. It's more about the descendants and those actors. So it's not a big Eddie Murphy thing. Because I wanted Eddie Murphy, I didn't want these descendants. So that was kind of uncool as well. I just couldn't feel for these people as much anymore. I'm not into the whole monarchy thing. I don't know why we're so into monarchies anyways. We're like, that's total non-freedom land. I don't know. I'm just not a big fan of seeing super powerful and their adventures and misadventures and the adventures they go on to and their self-awareness. They're trying to talk about all these equal rights and stuff. And then they'd have like, they literally have what appear to be sex servants or something like baiting them and such. And I know it's supposed to be comedy, but it's like, Mixed message as much? It's just really, I don't know, I just couldn't get into that. The final thing that irritated me is King Akeem, Eddie Murphy, what little bit we see of him. He's not a powerful king. He's all bark and not bite. It's just awful. Like, he doesn't seem to have changed at all. The first one he's supposed to be some changed king and change all these things, and he's changed nothing. It's all the same. And this movie seems more concerned about messages of empowerment instead of showing the people becoming empowered. So they have these maybe required things they have to talk about to show, you know, empowerment of something, of someone. But they don't put any effort into really doing it. So it just seems fake and forced. Now let's take a break from that and get into a life lessons. A life lesson line for this that'll help us build a better life worth living. I see in this movie the theme of believing in yourself. So how many times have you guys in your life started something, maybe a new class, going to college, a new job, something that was a really a challenge and scary for you. And you were doing it and you were actually doing okay but you reached a point where you would have had to ask for help, shift what you were doing, done some investigating how to improve, how to achieve your goal. You get this fear and you justify like crazy. And before you know it, you're quitting it. You can't do it, quote unquote, and you end up failing. So what I have discovered in my own experiences in life, you have to sell, you have an emotional mind and then you have your what you should do mind and you control more logical mind. For me, I have to convince my emotional mind to jump along and join the fun. If I can do that, then suddenly it's super easy to achieve a goal because you just remind yourself of the deeper thing that you're doing it for. So what I found that helped me is sit down and write why I want to do something. So for example, let's say I want to become a doctor. Ask, why do I want to become a doctor? I can't say because I like the money and I like the status and my parents think I'm cool. That's just not going to work. Being becoming a doctor is very hard. It has to be something deeper. It has to be something that is to serve others. Maybe you had a father who died of cancer when you were a kid and the doctors were cruddy doctors. They treated you like crud. They didn't put any effort out. And you told yourself, I swear one day I'm going to become a doctor and I'm going to do better. I'm going to make that family I take care of feel like I'm, they're important. I'm going to solve and solve and fix cancer. I'm going to fix cancer. And so that's your goal. So emotionally, your emotional mind or your heart is now involved in it. And now you'll find it a lot easier to go through all the pain and stress to become a doctor. Much easier. 
So a book that helped me with this was a book called Built to Serve by Evan Carmichael. You guys can check that out if you want. It helped me discover my why in my life and my passion. And it really made it a lot easier to push through the hard times because I think of that reason when things get hard. And this is my experience on the subject, but take what you like and leave the rest, guys. I'm just a guy. Now let's try to get into the positives. Uh, there are funny things about the movie and places they go and very pretty looking places. But guys, I wanted to like this movie. I really wanted to like this movie. I'm sorry. I just, I couldn't do it. I'm sorry. In summary, the actors are good and they are funny parts in the movie for sure. There are some real cool dancing and singing parts as well. If you are into seeing uber wealthy people, a massive palace, mini servants, and their lack of self-awareness all while on their adventures, then you might like this movie. I unfortunately, guys, just couldn't get into it. I mean, you know, to give it all fairness, I don't know. I don't remember the first movie that well, but I feel like this movie lacks in something. I'm not quite sure what it is. Maybe it's the poor becoming rich to the rich becoming poor type of thing. And that's more of a struggle, maybe. Also, they didn't have Eddie Murphy much in it. Or Samuel Hall. They were barely there at all. I'm going to have to give Coming to America 2, Coming to America 2, uh -huh, a 4 out of 10. 4 out of 10. Peace! Yeah, boy.